by Baker's Collision. Our first nominee this week is Jesse Leith, the Mohawk Jr. running back slash inside linebacker. 27 carries, so he was a workhorse, only 63 yards, but scored every touchdown for them. And then the huge catch, the 51-yarder that set up the game-winning score as they beat Bucyrus on the road. 20 to 13, they utilized this guy like crazy. It came up with the, the biggest plays and the biggest moments. Yeah, he did a great job. I was really impressed with him and his play. Obviously worthy of being a, 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 a primetime performer of the week, giving his team an opportunity to win in a big game that they had to have. Yeah, the three touchdowns in there, two catches, 64 yards, but none bigger than that 51-yarder, like I said, to set up the game-winning score. Cam Todd, Mansfield senior quarterback, 20 of 23, 238 yards through the sky, three touchdowns, no interceptions is the number that I know that Effie likes, and I think it's now three straight weeks with no turnovers for Cam Todd. Also had seven carries, 56 yards, and a touchdown as they beat Ashland 56-21. Just another impressive performance by this kid. I can't say enough about how comfortable he's become in that offense and, and how great of a job the staff has done with making him comfortable and doing things. Instead of, you know, sometimes as coaches, we tend to look at the board and say, this should work, that should work. Instead of saying, no, this is gonna work because he's comfortable with it. And the staff has done that and Cam is really flourishing right now. He's doing a great job. And the intangibles, man, they're probably the, the best leader that they have on oh, that team. absolutely. Big reason why the Tigers are seven and oh. Elijah Hughes, Clear Fork senior running back slash middle linebacker, a big bruiser, their dominant force. Three carries, 19 yards, a couple of touchdowns for them. Had two catches, 34 yards, and then four tackles and a sack. So he was just kind of everywhere for the Colts on homecoming night when they beat down Ontario 43-7. Right, you've got to have a guy that can punch it in. Like you said, necessarily the rushing yards aren't real impressive, but getting into the end zone is. And when you have a guy that you can hand the ball off and go get those tough yards, it's huge. You're talking about a young man that has to play both ways if Clear Fork's going to be successful, and he does that well. You can tell that he's the type of guy that, that people respond to and they follow. Um, and it's just, it, it, it really has been a pleasure this year to be able to see him come out and kind of have a great senior year. Yeah, he's had a fantastic season so far. Colts with a big win over the Warriors. Tommy Zerso back on the list. I think this is three weeks in a row for this kid, but when you're carrying the rock 26 times, you're racking up 185 yards against a D2 opponent, scoring a couple of times, and anchoring the defense that holds them in check. I mean, he belongs back on the list. 20 to eight, Lucas wins, and I just love the way that this kid plays, man. He's a big, bruising force. Zerso is a, he is a throwback, really, and they always have a couple of those guys, but he is truly, a throwback and he loves the contact and he loves those tough yards but he's also a big play guy so it, it's interesting to watch him play uh, football for, for Lucas because he fits right in that system. What I always wonder when I'm looking at kids like Zerzo and those guys for Lucas is who's next? Who's going to be the next kid coming up that's going to fit right into that system but, but he does an awesome job for the Cubs. And he's got them both number one in Region 25 right now. Finally, we've got Wilson Frankhouse, the Galleon Jr. quarterback slash defensive back. 12 of 26, so the numbers don't blow you away for the passing 125 yards. 13 carries, 60 yards, four pass breakups too. And he, he had some big ones, Eric. One in the end zone at the end of the game, broke, broke up a couple of big plays too. Well, and that's just it. I'm glad you brought up the defensive side because I think that that's where he really put his imprint, which sealed the game. I know even going down to the last few plays of the game, uh, they tried to go trips away, isolate him on the back with a taller wide receiver, 6'2", 6'3", wide receiver, and he just competed the entire game. The four, four pass breakups were huge because Shelby did what most teams are going to try to do, which is isolate a smaller DB, but he rose to that challenge. I thought he did a great job offensively running it. I liked how Gallion set him up where he could just one read. If it's not there, take off and run. And, man, he is quick. He's elusive. And uh, it was a pleasure getting to be able to, to, to be able to see him play along with his boy Alsip because I thought those two kids might have been the best two players on the field. And they get the win, do the Tigers 13-12 on the road at Shelby.